conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that I run like Myriad Business Solutions the Visionetics Institute Odyssey Media Group I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston Dallas and other areas uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody has had a great start to your week. I am off and running. Uh, you know the routine. Uh, you've seen the intro. If you believe in the work we're doing, go to the description box, click the link, and give or give to the organization's cash app handle. Support the work we do. Uh, so that we can take this to the next level. On that note, I'm moving forward. Look, I have never been shy about calling out people I believe to be enemies of the community, enemies of the cause, enemies of our journey and struggle for empowerment and to take our rightful place in an autonomous uh, manner. So I've called out uh, people now. I'm also very careful not to openly insult, attack my fellow brothers in the struggle simply because I disagree with them. So there's a difference. Disagreeing with someone, not holding the same opinion is a part of the process. Nobody is a clone of anyone else. So everybody is going to have their own train of thought, their own way of thinking. And so, I expect to disagree with certain things. I expect to have issues. I expect there to be times I may not get along with someone. But my thing is, if I can look at them and say, I believe authentically and genuinely they believe they're doing what's best for our people, I'm going to work with them and I'm going to keep my um, displeasure with whatever may be going on between them and myself uh, private and I've done that on more than one occasion. You have never seen me beefing with somebody that's a part of the journey and the struggle. You've never seen me out bad mouthing anybody. That's one of the things that I have made it a point in doing. I've seen a lot of my brothers beefing with one another, taking shots at one another, other people shooting at people that's on a higher platform hoping to get some traction and some exposure. I don't want any of that. Not that I'm afraid of anybody when it comes down to Handing out smoke, I can do it with the best of them. When it comes out down to being willing to do, go, go the distance, I, I ain't afraid of nobody. But I'm here for a purpose. I'm here to have a positive impact. I'm here to exhibit a certain level of behavior that is conducive to the advancement and empowerment of my people. What that means is I don't get to put my ego in the midst of anything. Something that I'm committed to is bigger than my ego. My purpose is, is astronomically more significant than my ego. I'm a person that I don't need anybody to validate me for my ego to be satisfied. I know what I've put into my life. I know the amount of time I've studied. I know the amount of uh, information I've consumed. I know the amount of people I've helped. I know what I'm capable of and I know what I've already done. I don't need anybody to tell me that I've done it. I know I've done it. I don't need anybody to tell me what I'm doing. I know I'm doing it. So I don't need that. I'm not here to gain significance. My very existence and the fact that I breathe is uh, the testimony to my significance. So I am not in any way concerned with that. I'm here to be a voice for the voiceless. I'm here to bring information, knowledge, 
and wisdom to those who truly want to see something different in their lifetime and to ensure that their progeny, their offspring, have something to inherit that is better than what they inherited when they came into the world. That's why I'm here. Now, when it comes to black men who I look at and say, you're the enemy, you're not a part of the struggle, you sold us out 100% completely for your own pocketbook, Steve Harvey, Roland Martin, Charles Barkley, Stephen A. Smith, and I can go on down the line. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call a spade a spade and I'm going to point out what you're doing because we need to be able to recognize people who have been strategically placed in front of us to write a narrative that we are going to more likely be willing to accept coming from black faces. And we've got to be careful of that. We've got to be careful of that uh, black skin with a white mask that, that, that appears to be for us, but is truly a weapon used against us. Barkley is on my radar right now. Shaq disappoints me, but capitalism is driving him right now, so I shouldn't be surprised. But Barkley married what he was committed to, what he saw, what he aspired to be and could never be. He married it. So that tells me a lot about it. Uh, a lot about him. Um, but here, here's what gets me. I believe that we can love our people even when they choose to move outside of our, our race to marry. I'm, I'm one that believes that my greatest commitment to, to the black struggle and to the radical nature of who I see myself as, as a black man, is loving a black woman. And I don't care what I go through or what type of situations I experience or how much pain I go through, it's still going to be a black woman. It's just that simple. I don't think there's a greater commitment a man can have to the black struggle than loving a black woman, period. I, you can't get me off of that, but at the same time, for those who are going on, I'm not one for tossing you completely away, but there are just certain things I just can't see you doing because your commitment, number one, should always be to your wife. Your number one commitment is to your wife. And if your wife by nature cannot be as committed to what you're saying you're committed to as you, that is a problem. If the fact that you're leaving wealth that you build to her and she may not choose to choose another black brother after you, if you were to leave this place, then that is um, something that you have to sit up and also be aware of. But when I see Charles Barkley, it's not the, just the fact that that's the smallest part, the fact that he married a white woman. He's not the only black brother that done been a sports, uh, that, that got wealth through sports and chose to, to jump ship. Not even close. Won't be the last. My problem is his approach and how he handles black people versus how he handles white people, i.e. Stephen A. Smith. Lately, he has had the audacity to try to lecture black people about how we handle people in the LGBTQ community. And I actually think it's, it's, it's hilarious because, and I'm going to tell you why it's hilarious. For the most part, black people jump on everybody's bandwagon and defend everybody. Yeah, there are some uh, voices that stand out that speak that are not flowing with praise and support for the LGBTQ community. I've been one, but there's never been any hate levied toward them. There's never been any, uh, I don't mess with them. I have family members a part of that community. I have friends who are a part of that community. I love all my black brothers and sisters and their sexual preferences and how they identify doesn't change that. But I believe that there are some things that we cannot simply embrace wholeheartedly with, with no awareness of how it impacts us, especially when it comes to the part of that narrative that openly and consistently wants to feminize the image of the black male, even when the male isn't gay. I have a problem with it. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with what it does. But 
at the same time, you've never heard me use any type of term of hate or anything like that because then I'm hating myself because I have family members, very close family members who are a part of that community. And I love them the same way I love anybody else. There's no difference. Here's the thing. I'm going to speak my truth because I have a right to speak my truth. Because I don't agree with you does not make me phob a phobic. Being a person whose uh, profession and level of expertise is in the world of mental disorder, a phobia is an irrational fear. I have no fear of gay people. I just have a disagreement in a lot of things that they do. And so that doesn't make me a phobic, uh, a phobe, a homophobe, or whatever you want to call me. But Barkley comes out. Now, this is crazy. After a white man goes into a gay club in Colorado, shoots the club up, kills five people, Barkley has the audacity to come out and say that black people are the worst race when dealing with the LGBTQ community. And actually, we're the ones that jump on every bandwagon. When anything happened to them, we defended everybody. When the Asians were getting jumped, black people were the number one voice and champions. We fight everybody battle except our own. So the idea, first of all, is it's an inaccurate statement. Now, when you find someone that's hostile towards it, they're pretty hostile, and they have their reasons for being hostile. But there is no person more intolerant of anything other than themselves and their ideals than a white man. So the idea that black people are worse, worse in treatment, no. But that's the lane he has, and that's the job he's been given. It is just like Stephen A., keep black people in check. You can say pretty much anything you want. It's amazing. Even when it comes down to Kanye and, and all that, you, you can say anything you want about black people, but don't, don't come out and say anything about this group or that group or this group. And everybody has certain levels of protection. Everybody's demanding that certain things be said, that everybody be held accountable. And the one group they want to keep in check is the black group. Why? They don't want you free thinking. They don't want you making up in your mind. They want you to literally be kept in line, programmed to follow the narrative. So whatever the narrative is, that's what you get to do. That's what you get to say. That's what you get to believe. That's who you get to be. You don't get a chance to think freely. If we allow you to have ideas and opinions like everybody else, you might start to figure out just how powerful you are. You might just start to figure out that nothing's the way they tell you it is. You might just start to figure out that there's a whole entire new truth that's behind all of the facades and the images that they're putting out in front of you. And you might decide that you don't want to play the game anymore. So we got to watch you because the original is dangerous when it determines and understands that it's the original. And so that is a part of it. But Barkley, just watch him, has all the smoke in the world for us. Where is the smoke for the guy who shot up the club? The guy that shot up the gay club in Florida some, several years ago. But we are the ones who ha are are the worst at in, in the way that we treat and handle the LGBTQ community. No, we're the ones calling out a bunch of BS we see that's being labeled L L LBGTQ and it's not actually LBGTQ. Um, it, 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 it's being connected to it for traction, but it's not. I know, again, members of the LGBTQ community, and they are saying and calling BS, especially when it comes to things like the feminization, the feminization of the black male image, how every black uh, gay man has to be flaming and, 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 and highly feminine in order to be classified as a gay male. When the truth of the matter is, the historical definition of that is the complete opposite. It's not someone that is identifying with femininity. It's a masculine man atta uh, attracted to another masculine man. That's homosexuality. That same-sex identity attracts the same-sex identity. When you got one being feminine and one being masculine, you just flip roles or something else and you still carry out the same thing, the gender, uh, um, the, the gender I, uh, identity is, is, the, is, is different mentally. In other words, you're still carrying out masculine, masculine-feminine relationships, 
It's just you got two people that would normally be considered masculine doing it if it's a man and two people who would normally be considered feminine doing it if it's a, if it's a woman. But you're still carrying out the same thing. Homosexuality, historically defined, is two people. If you didn't know any better, you wouldn't know being attracted to each other. But we've transformed it into something else and we've made it where everybody that's being celebrated in it in the black side has to be highly feminized. And so when you get someone like me saying that, then all of a sudden I'm, I've got it out for, no, I don't got it out for the gay community. I got it out for the media using the gay community as a means of directing a specific narrative within the, within the community that does not serve us well. It does not mean I hate my black brothers and sisters who are part of that community. I do not. What I can tell you also, because I spend a lot of time talking to them and I understand what is going on. I can tell you for a fact that they're experiencing a lot of the things we experience in the regular world within the LGBTQ community. They're not getting treated equally. They are not getting the same access and resources. They are not having the same benefits that this astronomical and rapid climb to power uh, that that we've seen take place with the LGBTQ community happening. They're not benefited from. They're still ostracized. They're still treated differently. They're still mishandled. I'm looking at it and I'm seeing it. So it's happening anyway. Back to Chuck, and then I'm done. You can't take anything away from this guy as an athlete and a player. He was a straight beast. He's always been a horrible piece of shit human being, period. He is championing or parroting a narrative that's safe for him in the area he wants to operate in. And it's amazing. I, I And I could be wrong because I don't do a whole lot of TNT and I don't watch a whole lot of that bull crap, but I could be wrong. But I get Shaq doing it a, a lot. I get Charles Bar Barkley doing it all the time. I don't really see Kenny doing it. Now, I could be wrong. And the crazy thing is many times this is why you got to be careful of just ascribing someone a sense of loyalty because of their skin color. But a lot of the times, Ernie is more on the side of, of, of reason and true interest and truth than those two clowns sitting at either end of the desk. And my thing is... It flows back to the same problem that we we have, and that is the same problem we have is that we're sitting up and we're asking money brokers and power brokers to sit up and finance our revolution, finance our evolution, finance our empowerment to literally supplement our radical escape from the control and grasp of their uh, horrible uh, campaign of control, oppression, and, 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 and suppression. And that's never going to be the answer to anything. You're going to have to realize that you have the goal, that you have what it takes, that you are capable of being what's necessary to do what you need to do in this world as individuals and as a collective. We are going to have to stand up. We're going to have to make up in our minds that we're going to do what it is that we need to do in order to be what it is we need to be. It's that simple. Oh, look, I'm not going to stay long, but... Just pay attention to that chump. You know, another, he, he, he is another reason and example of why I consistently say that we can't hang our hats on celebrities. We can't look at celebrities and expect them to be role models and expect them to be leaders solely because they become popular and famous because of what they do. If what they do isn't championing the advancement of our people, then they can't be the central focus. What we need to focus on is stop iconalizing anybody. We don't need icons. We need men being modeled 
manhood being modeled in every community. We need fatherhood being modeled in every community. We need husbandry being modeled in every community. We need strong women standing in, 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 in the strength of who they are modeled in every community. We need motherhood modeled in every community. We need family and love, black love modeled in every community. That's how we're going to build, not looking at one person or two people or people with a, with a platform saying, tell us what to do because they are going to be paid to tell you what someone else wants you to do instead of what you need to do. It's been done over and over again, and we keep falling for the okie doke. It's time for us to find the voices of knowledge, the voices of wisdom, the voices of strategy and planning and say, what is the next step? And then we move. The Odyssey Project has uh, operated as a think tank for more than 20 years. It has operated as a program distribution and services distribution hub for 20 years. I have used it to serve and create and, and offer, pro and I'm one, but I've done it and I will continue to do it. What I'm saying is there are other brains out there, unbelievable brains and minds that need to come together and we need to sit down and create strategies. We don't have to agree on everything. That's the lie that they've told us to keep us dis disunified is that that person doesn't think like this. That person is a socialist. That person is Pan-African. That person is um, B1. That person is a foundational black. That person is is an ADOS. And, and what do they have? They, now they've got us all separated and splintered. And they've broken us down. And they told you 50 years ago, almost 60 years ago, what their greatest fear was. Black unity. And what do they do? They do everything in their power to create this unity and they use us to do it to us. And then we fall for it every time we're running behind icons instead of creating within our within our communities hubs of men that that represent all proper values. So one man may be monogamous. Another man may be a practicing polygamist. If he's doing it correctly and he's showing love and the women understand all that and they're good for that, I can't do it. Never going to do it. When trying to do it, I, I can barely handle one. I'm not trying to do it, but for the ones who can and understand it and come understands the responsibilities that come with it, they're different. They represent that. We need that. We don't need one person saying because they move like that, they can't be trusted. If they're loving a black woman and taking care of black kids, we've got to sit up and listen to what they're talking about, and we've got to give them a, 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 a space to be able to do it safely. If they're talking about healing trauma, we need to talk about it. If they're talking about building financial hubs, we need to talk about it. If they're talking about healing all of the brokenness that's going on down the, down the line and that's built distrust between black women and black men, we need to talk about it. This is what we need to be doing. Not listen to the jackasses like Chuck Charles Barkley. Period. I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to leave you with that. So on that note, I'm going to check out it and, I, and I'll be back. I'll be talking to y'all with that. So much I've got to share and talk with you about, but I'm going to leave you with that. On that note, you guys have an unbelievable day and we'll talk soon.